This is Beat the Closing Line. Welcome back to Beat the Closing Line, presented by thelines.com. I am Eli Herskovich, alongside my guest today on the podcast, Joe Fortenbaugh, at Joe Fortenbaugh on Twitter, the host of Daily Wager weeknights on ESPN2, and also the host of a new ESPN radio show, Joe and Amber, from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern, again on ESPN Radio. What is going on, Joe? Long time no talk. Yeah, Eli, it's been a while. You know, for your audience, they'll probably think this is the first time they've heard us together, but you and I go back a ways, so it's nice that we have the opportunity to connect here going into the biggest uh, weekend of the year. I know you'll be picking my brain on the NFL here, but expect me to be reaching out to you as we get closer (laughs) to college basketball's tournament time, because I got to be honest, and this is not to blow smoke, You are one of my absolute favorite cappers when it comes to college hoops. Your insight, the work you put in, second to none, my friend. Thank you very much, Joe. And again, Joe is one of the best handicappers when it comes to the NFL and any sport for that matter. But before we get into the Super Bowl matchup between the Eagles and the Chiefs, remember to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and ring the bell to get notifications whenever a new episode is up. TheLines.com is also giving away a $25 Amazon gift card in our daily college hoops pick em contest and Super Bowl for that matter. For more details, head over to play.thelines.com. And as always, join the Lines Discord channel to get notifications when we place bets on the Super Bowl, among other sports. But Joe, let's start off with the spread and the total here. The Chiefs opened as a short favorite. Money came in on Philly, obviously, and pushed them out to minus two and a half. Back down to Eagles minus one and a half as of this recording Tuesday afternoon. Eagles around minus 125 on the money line. Chiefs around plus 105. The total at 51, out to 51 at some books, 50 and a half at others. So looking at this thing spread first, what was your first inkling? The first inkling, to be honest, was, um, and you and I both know Circa Sports here in Las Vegas is a very sharp book. When I saw them hang Kansas City minus two and a half, and everybody else hang pick them, and then a bunch of Eagles money came in, it's easy for some people to look at that and say, whoa, the books really had it wrong. I I don't know. Like, I think Circa's opinion is one that you really have to take into account. You don't necessarily have to agree with it, but you can't dismiss it. And full disclosure, I'm an Eagles fan, so I'd love to believe they're going to win this game. But I saw that two and a half, and it had me thinking. Then I'm seeing a lot of guys who like the idea of Kansas City scoring a lot of points in this game, and I'm diving into the research and looking at the fact that, and I mean, as an Eagles fan, I've watched them all year. Philly has been very fortunate with the schedule. They have faced, I believe, four teams that ranked in the top 10 in scoring this year. One of those teams was Detroit. The Lions hung 35 on them. One of those teams was the was uh, the Cowboys. That second game with Dak Prescott, they hung 40 on the Eagles. The other two were Minnesota, which was a home game in week two. They blew the doors off the Vikings. And the other one was Jacksonville, believe it or not. I thought to myself when I saw that number, I understand why the Eagle money's coming in, but I'm leaning to the Chiefs. And I hate to say it, but I'm leaning to the Chiefs. I think there's value there. I know they're dealing with a lot of injuries, but if the injury report isn't an absolute catastrophe at the wide receiver position, the Chiefs should be able to hang a number here. Yeah, great points there. And some stuff you brought up with Philly, obviously. Nine wins against winning teams. You mentioned Detroit, Jacksonville another, Pittsburgh another one of them. All started out 2-6 and six before finishing 9-8. and eight. Three wins against the Giants. Vikings, you mentioned on Monday night in Week 2. The Cowboys with Cooper Rush and not Dak Prescott in their first meeting. And then Brock Purdy going down for the Niners in the NFC Championship game. But you mentioned Kansas City's offense as well, and you think the Chiefs are going to be able to put up points. Team total for Kansas City, around 25 and a half. Any lean there? So initially, I was thinking this game was going to be an under in general. And I'll get to the the part you, you asked for in just a second. Because my thought process was, look, if you're Kansas City, the weakest of the four units on the field is likely to be your defense. Mahomes is dinged up. You got some injuries on the uh, at the wide receiver position. You're facing an Eagles team that can score. Wouldn't you want to take your time going up and down the field? Wouldn't you want to run the ball a little bit since that's the Achilles heel of the Eagles defense? And I, I started to buy into the under. But again, you spend some time doing the research. You talk to people in the know. You watch the number go up. And you start to think to yourself, I could see this game starting slow. 
So I kind of like the first half under, but I think eventually they'll open it up. The Eagles and their aggressiveness on fourth down and with two-point conversions, I wouldn't be surprised if Andy Reid got aggressive in this game, and I could see it going over the total. So when you're talking about a team total for Kansas City, coupled with the analysis I gave you earlier, that I don't think the Eagles' defense is as good as some of those statistics indicate, I would be inclined to bet Kansas City's team total over under the caveat that they're not completely destroyed at the wide receiver position. And I don't want to bring that up anymore. This is, I promise it's the last time I'm <laughs> going to bring that up, except for maybe a first TD prop where I might have a, a little bit of a handicap there. But if they come in okay at wide receiver, I think Mahomes will be able to hang a number here. Yeah, and Juju Smith-Schuster and Kadarius Tony both quote-unquote practicing yesterday, according to Andy Reid, as of Monday. So before we get to props, player props, looking at the MVP market, Jalen Hurts the favorite at plus 120, Mahomes right behind him at plus 130. Any bets in this market? I think if you like the Chiefs, you got to play Mahomes, right? Like, you know this as well as I do. What would you rather do here if you like the Chiefs? Play the Chiefs on the money line plus 105, play them on the spread plus one and a half, or play Mahomes MVP plus 130? Like, where do you think the best value is? Right, Mahomes MVP. Exactly. You, you, you have to say to yourself, what's the likelihood that the Chiefs win this game and Mahomes doesn't win MVP? So I think that would be a good bet there. Now, conversely, I don't think the same thing works for Jalen Hurts because I do see a path where the Eagles win this game and someone other than Hurts wins the award. I think Miles Sanders is intriguing. I think Devontae Smith is intriguing. I think you have to look at the Philly defense because every year I want to play one or two defenders just for fun. I want to put the Hail Mary prop up there. Hassan Reddick's 35 to 1. Josh Sweat is 150 to 1. He had double digit sacks this year. If the Eagles win, there's a chance that defense annihilates everything I just said two minutes ago about them being overrated. They play really well. They bust up Mahomes, and the defensive front has their say. I mean, you look at the game against the Niners, the defensive front won that game. They knocked Brock Purdy out of the game. They knocked Josh Johnson out of the game. They ruined the entire matchup for the Niners. And if they did something like that here or even close, they're going to garner some recognition. So MVP votes I'm going to be making. I will have Mahomes. I'll have Miles Sanders. I'll have Devontae Smith, Hassan Reddick, and then also Josh Sweat. From the Chiefs side, it's just Mahomes. And then I'm definitely diversifying the portfolio on Philadelphia. You can find all the best odds in the MVP market over at thelines.com. Now, you teased a touchdown prop that you like, so let's go there next. All right, so this one isn't as good as it was earlier in the week, but Jody <laughs> Fortson, the Kansas City wide receiver, 25-1 to 1 to score an anytime touchdown, or excuse me, 25-1 to 1 to score the first touchdown, plus 650 to score an anytime touchdown. I think you got to get involved in that there. Again, back to the narrative of this entire interview of the wide receiver unit being banged up for Kansas City. Those are great prices for a guy that at one point was 60 to 1 to score the first touchdown and 13 to 1 to score an anytime TD. So I'd be looking at Jody Fortson. For an anytime TD, I'd also be looking at Jalen Hurts. I saw it plus 113. He's found the end zone on the ground in seven of his last nine. I think he's got like 15 rushing touchdowns in 17 games this season. And the Chiefs have struggled to defend opposing quarterbacks who have run the ball this year. So Hurts, if you've watched him play since the injury, especially in the second half against San Francisco, he's been tentative about throwing the ball over the middle. He's taking deep shots down the sidelines, but he will try to make plays with his feet. I'm definitely going to play the plus 113 on him to have an anytime TD. Makes a lot of sense. Over to novelty props. You know, we can probably both agree that there shouldn't be juice on the coin toss prop, but that's another conversation for another day. <laughs> Anything you like in this, whether it's, I don't know if you would take a shot on the coin toss or another novelty prop. I don't think you're betting just for fun and throwing some lunch money on it. So I tend to not play the coin toss because it has nothing to do with the juice or anything like that. Of course, you should not be playing it if it's minus 104, minus 110. <laughs> That's just bad investment. But my rationale is this. I'm going to have a ton of action on this game one way or another. And I hate the idea of that being the first bet and it being a loser. I hate <laughs> the mojo from that. Now, if I win that bet, it does almost nothing for me because it's, I don't even have a chance to enjoy it before the game's about to kick off. But if I lose it with my pessimistic mindset, that bet is going to sit with me all day. And if I have <laughs> a bad day, I'm going to blame it on the coin toss. So I generally tend to avoid it just because I don't want the bad mojo. I found a cross-sport prop I'll throw out there. Waste management open. Rory McIlroy fourth-round score against Miles Sanders rushing prop. 
It's McElroy's fourth round score minus six and a half. McElroy's worst round ever at the Waste Management Open, and he's only played there once, but it was a 70. So if he shoots a 70, I need Sanders, and I like Sanders in this matchup. I need Sanders to run for 64 yards. 64 plus six and a half, I end up winning that bet. McElroy could shoot better. And Sanders' rushing prop is 59 and a half, and it's juiced to the over. And I do think he's going to play a big role in the ground game here. Bonus prop, I think Miles Sanders plus 175 to be the game's leading rusher is another bet worth making because with Clyde edwards Lair coming back, you have him, you have McKinnon, and you have Pacheco in the chief backfield. And Gainwell and Boston Scott are both used primarily in the passing game for the Eagles. So I'd make that bet as well, and I'd have to outrush Hurst. Or Jalen Hurts, excuse me. So I'd be looking at that crossover prop. Uh, but in terms of the novelty stuff, I don't have anything else right now in terms of the anthem. We both know that that got blown out of the water a few weeks ago when that or years ago when that idiot stood outside the stadium and recorded right. it the cat out of the bag. And I don't play the Gatorade prop until Sunday because if you track the market and keep refreshing the page like a nerd like me, eventually you'll see the odds for Gatorade shift dramatically, which indicates that the, the color has leaked. Someone knows what's in the coolers. And if you can get that information and beat your local to the change, you might be able to find an edge there. Joe Fortenbaugh, you can follow him on Twitter at Joe Fortenbaugh. Last thing here, Joe, that I want to get your thoughts on, and I will be tailing you on that McElroy Sanders prop, by the way. <laughs> Just want to let you know. We go back, like you mentioned at the beginning, a long, a long time ago. How did you get your start in the sports betting industry? I always find it fun to kind of wrap up with this because people obviously like to tail your bets and, and others' bets, but uh, it's also fun to kind of figure out and find out your background and you have a long history, not just in sports betting, but in radio too. So why don't you explain it to the audience? So I came out of law school uh, in 2006. I had interned for an NFL agent. He ended up launching a website called National Football Post. And I had an opportunity to kind of manage the day-to-day -day operations of the website, write about fantasy football. I wrote some statistical stuff and some, you know, opinion pieces here and there. But a few years in, you know, I had been betting on stuff since I was little. I always loved betting on sports. I was a total square at this point. I wanted to write about sports betting. You know, I wanted to include that. I thought there was room for coverage. And the only guy doing it at that time was, was Chad Millman at ESPN. And it was buried on like a back page because it was illegal and it was tawdry. So I'm living in PA. I got nothing going on with my life. I got like two grand in my name. I got a maxed out credit card. And it's 2011. And I said, you know what? I need to change. I'm going back out West. I'm going to move to Vegas for one football season. And I'm going to do whatever I need to do to meet all the bookmakers and all the pro betters. I'm going to learn this industry. I'm going to learn how it works. I'm going to get good at this and I'm going to cover it. And you know what? Maybe one day it'll get legalized and I'll have a chance at a bigger job. So I'm in Vegas. I said one football season, but I ended up living here for like three years and it led to a radio job in San Francisco. So I end up in San Francisco. I'm doing morning sports talk radio on the Warriors flagship, but I still was doing a sports betting podcast. I was still writing about it. I, and by this point, I had been covering it like six, seven years. I was one of the first guys to do it. And PASPA gets repealed by the Supreme Court. And immediately overnight, every major network is looking for sports betting people. And I just happened to be a guy who had been doing it for so long and also happened to have some media background because I had been doing morning sports talk radio and I had done a little bit of TV work that suddenly I was in demand and I had an opportunity and ESPN gave me a shot at an audition. I did well enough with that. I got a part-time gig there. I turned it into a full-time gig. My family ended up moving back to Las Vegas and the rest is history. So that's kind of how it started. I, the best bet I ever made was moving out to Vegas with no money to cover the industry and the hopes that PASPA would be repealed one day, and it ended up cashing. You bet on yourself, man. At plus money, I would say, and you <laughs> cashed that bet. So congrats, Joe, the host of the Daily Wager Weeknights on ESPN2 and also the host of a brand-new ESPN radio show, Joe and Amber, from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern. A reminder to head over to thelines.com as we're giving away a $25 Amazon gift card in our Daily Pick'em Contest. For more details, head over to play.thelines.com. Dot com and also check out the Lions podcast on Apple and wherever you find your favorite podcast. Thanks so much, Joe. Really appreciate Eli, the time. An absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me on the show. It was a pleasure speaking with your audience. Good luck this weekend. And like I said, I'm going to be reaching out when we get close to the madness, my friend. You're my top college <laughs> basketball guy. I'm going to need some help. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it, man.